prodigy kind of thing, a guy, a guy that Matt was bringing along and stuff. He had some talent, some marketability and stuff, but, right. but like you he said, was police, here's the thing. He was a police chief's uh, stepson and uh, not stepson, his police chief's adopted son. And um, he uh, was, we didn't know, but he was, he was my workout partner. And uh, he was like, he, at the time he was like um, pretty buff and strong as hell. But then he went on some crazy diet to where he like quit eating meat and he like got way more ripped. So he looked way tougher, but he was way weaker. And I was like, Kim, you gotta, you gotta, uh, lay off. you guys to put meat back in your, in your system. Cause you're not as strong. Well, little did I know it's cause he was frying on acid and, uh, and humping men. Um, so his thing was, is, is, uh, he found out that his boyfriend told him that he had AIDS. And so, uh, Kim took a, a bottle of a, a syringe and filled it up with bleach and then tied the t- tied the guy up, um, taped him to a chair, and then threatened to inject bleach into the guy's neck. And then, um, so the guy like talked him into letting him go. I love you, Kim. And so um, Kim let him go. And, uh, the guy called the cops and said he was kidnapped and all that. Well, Kim gets arrested, but then he gets released because he's the police chief's son. Well, after that, um, what happened is Kim uh, re-kidnapped the guy, chopped him up into little pieces, murdered him, chopped him into little pieces, and, and they never. <laughs> And uh, Damn. Uh, confesses that to his to his girlfriend, and his girlfriend like tells the cops what happened, and so they ended up getting him on circumstantial evidence. He's doing life in prison. Man, so he's a training partner, huh? Now, 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 Miguel, didn't he fight for you while all this was going on in Hook and Shoot? If if I if I could add to the story, I, I think that the actual incident where he committed murder happened either the week before the Hook and Shoot. He flew to hook and shoot and fought. And if you check the tape, his his band in in the his leg is bandaged, and in the interchange, apparently, is he got cut in the leg trying to kill the guy I, or or whatever it was. So it's kind of like the hook and shoot fight is evidence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, I, if I'm the, this dude, should have tried to fight for you in uh, freaking Costa Rica. He could have just never came home, man. That's what it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, you know, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot to take in there, and it goes beyond fighting. There's a lot of problems Ooh. there, but he, he was a talented individual. He actually was part of Matt's ADCC team one year too. Right. Yeah, he, he was a good grappler, man. He was good. Matt brought him and uh, Matt had that kid, uh, that kid um, Otto Olson, who who ended up getting wow. second. Uh, but Otto was a runner up in, in national. He was a three time All American in nationals uh, in wrestling too. Wow! So, uh, and Otto Otto was just a long tall <clears throat> lane guy, and he ended up wrestling his way to to second place at Abu Dhabi. Hey. Yeah, you know, like the mixed martial art grappling world, you meet so many people that you would normally never cross paths with. You know, another guy like Rafael Torre. You know, it, it's just like footnotes like Kim Mason and Rafael Torre that th- – did you ever like, cross paths with Rafael? But it's just – it's so interesting how these people kind of come to the top. 